Okay, that was quick. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks very much, Helen. So, um, I'll just wait for everybody in. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a script here, I think it's just, you know, so I'll just gonna read and um, I can take questions afterwards as well, um, if necessary. So I just want to thank uh, Bug Life and the National Museum of Northern Ireland for inviting butterfly conservation to this conference on what no doubt is and will be a very interesting day for us all. Um, I'm delighted to be here to represent butterfly conservation. My name is Rose Kremen and I am the conservation manager for, for Northern Ireland, helping butterfly conservation to deliver, to deliver its vision on the ground for priority landscapes and priority species. And in my short presentation today, I'm going to highlight Butterfly Conservation's new strategy 2026, the State of Butterflies Report 2022, that was just published last month, the State of Britain's Larger Moth 2021 report, and the Atlas of Britain and Ireland's Larger Moths. I'll also touch on our landscape scale conservation work for species, the actions and aspirations, and finally, some of the risks, threats, and opportunities for our work. So BC um, launched a new strategy in 2021 in response to the threats and declines that we are evidencing in butterflies and moths. <clears throat> our new plan to 2026 is designed to help deliver a step change in nature conservation in the UK. To do that, we need to build our, on our successes, focus our resources and deliver even greater impact. We must build stronger collaborations, be part of nature's recovery at a larger scale and broaden our reach so that everyone can enjoy the wonders of butterflies and moths. So, I might have moved to the slide. Okay, so um, the driver of Goal One is a threatened species program targeting 71 of the most threatened butterflies and moths in the UK. <clears throat> BC's priority species that occur in Northern Ireland include three butterfly species and four moth species, namely marsh artillery, large heath, cryptic woodwhite, Irish bloom, scarce crimson and gold, <clears throat> excuse me, yellow winged carpet, and Lamprona pubicornis. We will also include regional priorities, for example, for Northern Ireland, including small blue and forester. We will use a species recovery curve model to track progress towards sustainable recovery. Our aim would be to move species <clears throat> along the stages of the curve as efficiently as possible, the stages being status assessment, diagnosis, solution testing, recovery management and sustainable management. That, this brings us to understanding what species we should be concerned about where and how butterfly conservation gathers some of its data and shares it back out to the recorders, statutory bodies, organizations, and members of the public. BC have been producing the State of Butterflies report since 2001, roughly every five years in partnership with CEH and BTO. The reports present an assessment of the UK species of breeding butterfly derived from long running country, countryside schemes using millions of citizen science observations to chart the changing abundance and distribution of these iconic insects. The results provide a robust evidence base for conservation, policy development, and scientific research focused on UK butterflies. Further, they indicate the state of the environment and wider biodiversity and afford important insights into the global phenomenon of insect decline. And I should say that all of these are actually available to download from our website as well, so, which, is, which is great, it's a really useful resource. <clears throat> the following two maps illustrate the locations of the butterfly monitoring sites that contribute to the UK BMS or the UK butterfly monitoring scheme um, that took place in 2019 and the butterflies of the new millennium recording coverage 2015 to 2019 shown as a number of records in each 10 kilometer grid square in the UK. These two recording schemes generate invaluable data sets and are available thanks to the tremendous efforts of a network of recorders citizen scientists and partner organizations. These data sets allow for trends to be produced and for abundance and distribution of species and have enabled BC to identify species to be included in the special or in the threatened species program. <clears throat> this multi-species indicator produced graph provides an overall summary, <clears throat> excuse me, of changes in abundance for the State of Butterflies Report 2022. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> 
and illustrates the UK butterfly abundance indicators for all species in black, habitat specialists in blue, and wider countryside species in red. <clears throat> Thick lines show the smoothed indicators for confidence intervals in the shaded areas. Thin lines show the raw, unsmoothed values. Since 1976, species abundance has declined 6%, with wider countryside species showing a 17% decline while habitat specialist abundance declined by 27%. The multi-species indicator produced graph here provides an overall summary of changes of species distribution for the State of Butterflies Report 2022. The UK butterfly distribution indicators for all species is illustrated again in black, habitat specialists in blue, and wider countryside species in red. Thick lines show the smooth indicators with confidence intervals, shaded areas, and thin lines show the raw, unsmoothed values. So for this, 30 UK habitat specialists were included in this analysis and combined, they show a decline of 68% in their distribution since 1976, which is really alarming. So only about half of the resident and regularly breeding butterfly species in Northern Ireland <clears throat> had sufficient data to calculate long-term trends up to 2019. So these indicators are not representative of the butterflies, of all butterflies, sorry. The multi-species indicators for Northern Ireland show decreases of 17% in abundance and 10% in distribution. <clears throat> Habitat specialist species that are of conservation concern in Northern Ireland, such as large heath, grayling, small blue, and dingy skipper do not as yet have sufficient monitoring coverage to produce trends. However, Given the previous slide illustrating the steep decline in habitat specialists' distributions, we need to be cautious drawing conclusions from available Northern Ireland data, which could be masking greater declines, and particularly in distribution, and particularly for um, habitat specialists. The State of Britain's Larger Moths 2021 report draws on data of circa 900 species of larger moths from a network of Roth Amstead insect surveys and the National Moth Recording Scheme. The total abundance of larger moths caught in the RIS light trap network in Britain decreased by 33% over 50 years, and that's from the period 1968 to 2000 or 2017. Sorry, distribution trends revealed a different picture of 511 larger moth species for which long-term trends could be calculated from the National Moth Recording Scheme, 32% decreased in distribution and 37% increased, while 31% had non-significant trends. The multi-species distribution indicator increased in extent by 9% over a 47-year period from 1970 to 2016, and the northern range margins of moths have on average shifted northwards by five kilometers per year. Um, and I, I think this is this relates to what maybe Roy was talking as well about you know climate change and possibly getting getting more species. So, you know, not necessarily always bad news. It's also important to to note that we do not have trends for most scarce and rare species in Britain. The production of the Atlas of Britain and Ireland's larger moths was a collaboration between Moths Ireland and Butterfly Conservation. A relatively long history of moth recording has seen significant growth in moth recording from the 1990s onwards to peak levels today, encouraged by improved identification guides, technology, and social media. While the picture of species abundance and distribution is complex across the countries, the data reveals that many species are experiencing significant declines in abundance and distribution, while others increase in population size and extent and extend their range. So what can we do about the declines that are being evidenced by the data? Butterfly conservation, like many ENGOs, are taking up the Lawton review of bigger, better, more joined up approach and a new strategy, um, which is just evidence here. So we're talking about species recovery, and I mentioned that earlier. Um, and we, we wanna move our focus from not just species, but to landscape scale work, or just, just more focused work on that. Um, and to make our work more relevant um, and using species as evidence of nature recovery. Um, we'll be looking to funded projects to help um, deliver our vision and partnerships, as always, for butterfly conservation, especially in Northern Ireland, where we don't have nature reserves, is really, really important to us. 
Um, and we need to build a network of staff, volunteers and partners across the UK supported by a land use hub, providing guidance on restoring habitats. <laughs> So this is the approach that butterfly conservation have taken to our most protected species of Lepidoptera, marsh artillery. On the species recovery curve, it sits at recovery management. It's a well-researched, studied and published on species. It's protected under legislation and has its own all-island monitoring scheme, in addition to having an option under Northern Ireland's agri-environment scheme. From 2017 to 2022, under the Interreg CAB European funded project, butterfly conservation delivered in partnership conservation action on seven sites, two of which were in the Republic of Ireland. However, even for this well catered for species, we don't always get it right. Management can be unsympathetic, non-designated priority suitable breeding habitat can be damaged and lost, and species rich grassland habitat where it breeds are threatened by tree planting targets. Large Heath is one of the butterfly conservation's UK priority butterfly species, we know that peatland habitat where it occurs is threatened, while the species is also data deficient. We want to change that through increasing monitoring for the species through single species transits and either supporting or delivering peatland conservation program work. As part of this effort, we're developing habitat suitability models and hope to partner in peatland restoration work through the Peace Plus 5.1 program. Large Heath is a positive indicator species of a healthy peatland so it can help monitor successful restoration projects, projects which will benefit other taxa as well. And so Butterfly Conservation have also been working with partners, the Ulster Wildlife Trust and the National Trust at some of the North Coast sites, looking at how we can make positive impacts on, other, on another threatened priority moth species, Parista sanguinalis. Working with these partners and consulting with Queen's University and Northern Ireland's Moth Committee, BC Research and Conservation Directorates have designed two master's projects to help answer some crucial questions we have for this poorly understood species around its ecology and habitat. We've circulated these master's projects for two years, and after the first, Butterfly Conservation also secured, secured uh, travel and subsistence funding. Um, it would be great to see one or both taken up, uh, so keep these in mind when you're talking to colleagues, because they're still out there and they're available. So, you know, um, you know, a great project and obviously very, very iconic and nice species to work on. And project work can also help understand other rare species too, like Northern Cletes. A final BC priority landscape and species is that of calcareous grassland in Northern Ireland and species including Irish plume and small plume that occur here. Last summer, a small group of us led by the county moth recorder trapped and sweep netted a site in West Fermanagh and confirmed Irish plume breeding on the site after a 70 year, 17 year gap in records. We're developing relationships with some of the key farmers in this landscape and are hoping we can work with a range of stakeholders to improve the habitat condition, not just for Lepidoptera, but the multiple species and taxa that occur here. We need to monitor, but also plan conservation action to manage invasive species, encroaching scrub and establish appropriate grazing regimes at this, at this landscape. So this is, this, is a, this is a really cool um, infographic. Um, so butterflies and moths, as we know, are the best studied group of insects in the world. Um, they are extremely useful indicator for the wider decline in flying insects. This butterfly graphic, butterfly stripes graphic, represents the declining distribution of UK butterflies from 1976 to 2019, using the all species butterfly distributor indicator and inspired by climate stripes. And what are the risks? The risk is doing nothing, not changing how we've been doing things, not being ambitious enough, not moving quickly enough. The human induced threats are well rehearsed. And while we have additional complexities in Northern Ireland with the lack of an executive impacting policy and funding. BC also plan to galvanize community invertebrate action around our goal three of wild spaces, connecting people to nature, and transforming 100,000 wild spaces for people, butterflies, and moths. Butterfly conservation has a great history of partnership working in Northern Ireland, and we will continue to do this, although more resourcing would be really, really helpful. So all of these state of um, butterfly reports are available 
um, to download from our website and I've brought some and they're available at the back of the room as well. Um, please get in touch with myself or my colleague Rosie Irwin, who works on volunteering and engagement, if you'd like to discuss partnership work with us. And BC, I should also say as well, there's, there's so many really um, you know, eminent and, and well experienced people here. BC also have a, head, a vacancy for Head of Conservation Wales and Northern Ireland at the moment out for recruitment. So that might be of um, interest to some of you as well. Um, so yeah, and I, you know, again, um, everything I've mentioned here really um, is, is, is really because of uh, volunteer and recording uh, support that we have in Northern Ireland. So particularly a big shout out to Butterfly Conservation Northern Ireland branch, and some of the members are here today. The Moth Committee, Butterfly and Moth Recorders, County Recorders, the UK Butterfly Monitoring Scheme Coordinator, funders and partners. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, you can donate to Butterfly Conservation as well if you want to help us out and help us get some of those resources I've talked about. Um, that's our website. Um, lots of great resources and materials there. Um, and that's my email as well if you want to get in touch. And lastly, I should importantly say thank you very much to our funders as well, to NIEA and to the Department of Communities. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Thanks. Um, just in the sort of the for time and populations to create that crossover. Matt? Um, in this is in all of the plants. Um, we just go back and take a look at that. There's probably a really good explanation in the report. I mean, the report is a 20 or 30 page um, document. Um, we've had some really good years as well. I mean, you know, I particularly remember 2018 being, um, are you talking about the, the middle the middle part there? Um, it's probably to, just to, to good, good, you know, good recording years, good season years. So 2018, for example, in Northern Ireland was a really good um, year for marsh artillery. Um, it was probably a peak year in terms of, of um, abundance and its distribution as well. We found that it colonized new sites. So there's, there's probably, you know, that, that factor is there. Is that the graph you're talking about? Okay. Okay. So, so the top, um, I'll have to go, the, the, the top line is wider countryside species. Okay. So actually, I yeah, know that's a good question. I'm glad I'm looking at this again. So wider countryside species are actually seem to be benefiting and not as impacted by, let's say, habitat loss and all the other threats that butterflies are facing um, and actually slightly increasing in their range and their abundance through climate change. So that's the top line you're looking at. So wider countryside species are so really common species, although some of the species that occur there could become our threatened species of the future. So what we are really worried about is the, the bottom line habitat specialists. So species like, you know, heath fertility, um, marsh artillery would be in there, although it's stable but declining. It's not, you know, so chronic, but it, yeah, it's the habitat specialist we need to be looking at. So, so that's telling us that there's something happening with our, you know, our, our designated sites, our, our high value sites. I hope that answers the question. Is it? 